Well, Advent is upon us, and for my family, that means it's time for the ritual of decorating the Christmas tree. I am full of childhood memories, duplicated when my own kids were young, of going out on a cold December evening to the local Christmas tree lot and choosing the perfect tree, just the right shape and size, tying it to the car roof, bringing it home. No doubt pagan roots, but still a symbol of wonder, a holy promise of life, quiet and persistent even in the midst of winter. You'd put it up in the living room and soon the whole house was filled with the smell of pine and of spruce. Then came the lights, but you usually did this alone because of the frustration potential and the possibility of the occasional cuss word slipping out. But eventually it got done, you gathered the whole family together, everybody knew that the colors were coordinated, you plugged it in, overhead lights were turned off. These are white, but in my household, the whole room would be filled with a soft, warm glow of red and yellow, green and blue. And that's when you knew why Christmas always immediately followed the winter solstice, that the light wins the day. And then you find yourself whispering softly, arise, shine, for your light has come, the true light coming into the world, and the darkness has not overcome it. And you know what? You believe it. Then, after the lights, comes the time for the ornaments. In my household, the first ornament was always uh, somewhat ugly. An old tin can lid painted red with some ancient specks of sparkle, 60 years old, made by my spouse many years ago, but carefully preserved. Now, here we have a classic pine cone, a little kitsch, but we all know that every ornament made by a child is transformed by love into something beautiful. And you hang it on the tree with absolute delight, remembering the words of Jesus who said, whenever you welcome a little child, you welcome me. Now, look at this. A very clever ornament. A scroll of music, and then I add a couple of angels here, and all of a sudden we have singing. Gloria. We humans, we're made for singing, but we don't often get an opportunity to do it. Now, Christmas gives us an occasion when it feels just fine to make a joyful noise unto the Lord and to do it even if you're a little off key. So this season, make sure that you have an opportunity to join with some angels and sing your heart out. And remember, angels often come in disguise. Also, though, make sure that you have times of quiet so that you can actually listen for wherever angels might appear and say softly to you, Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy. Somewhere, though, in this whole process, you're going to have to make a decision about where Santa fits in with your Christmas tree. Maybe he arrives in the Polar Express or accompanied by a couple of Santa elves who are twirling in a heart. You have to ask yourself, how much room does Santa take under your tree? Can we resurrect the story of St. Nicholas in a meaningful way, or has the spirit of giving been swallowed up in the Christmas machine? But you know, giving is really important. Wise men, little drummer boy, no matter how you tell the story, at the very heart of it is the mystery of a God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the story of our creator who gives life and light and love. Giving is important. So I want to add these two ornaments, beautifully gift-wrapped little packages, and we place them in the tree. And that gives me an opportunity to talk about the United Church giving catalog called Gifts with Vision, an invitation to each of us to give gifts that actually make a difference. $10 will buy 10 chickens for a family in Mozambique and give them food and something to sell to make a living. Or $50 will buy an entire week of tea and coffee and drop-in sandwiches at the Oak Table Ministry in a tough part of Winnipeg. Or if you're feeling generous, $120 will buy you a bicycle for a pastor in Zambia who may be serving 40 or 50 congregations spread all over. 
giving is important, and you can almost hear Jesus say, inasmuch as you have given it to the least of these, you've given it to me. And finally, and the very last thing you do with your Christmas tree, you place the star on top and let that light shine. And you are filled with a hope, a promise, a faith, a commitment that this year in your home, Bethlehem will happen again and Christ will be born. And may you have a Christmas that matters.